Hello, First Tech Challenge, and welcome to Into the Deep, presented by RTX. This season, the documents that were previously called Game Manual Part 1 and Part 2 were combined into a single competition manual. With this change, a number of technology-related rules have been rewritten. Some of the rules provide additional clarity on existing restrictions, and others expand what is possible in First Tech Challenge. Some of the key terms that we use have changed, such as the term Operator Console and Arena, so be sure to check out the glossary at the end of the competition manual. First Tech Challenge wants to give teams a lot of flexibility when it comes to constructing their robots. The trade-off is that teams have more responsibility to understand the parts they use and provide documentation to inspectors. A perfect example of this is the new rule about legal servos. Instead of listing specific servos that are legal for use, the rule specifies the maximum mechanical output power and stall current that are allowed. Many of the servos used by teams today already meet these requirements, and will be included in the legal parts list. Other servos that aren't listed can still be legal, but it's the team's responsibility to check that they meet the requirements and provide documentation to your robot inspector showing that they do. This gives teams the maximum amount of freedom, while addressing the trend of increasingly powerful servos finding their way onto First Tech Challenge robots. Another example is the rewritten rule about minimum software versions for your robot controller and driver station devices. In the past, field inspectors have enforced minimum software versions for all of these devices. Now, these minimum versions are only recommendations. Strong recommendations, but not required. This is another area where teams have greater freedom to use different versions of software that work for them. However, teams also have the responsibility to upgrade their own software. Field staff will not be able to provide comprehensive support to teams with older software versions. This season, teams have more choices than ever when it comes to legal components for powering and moving their robots. This includes new motors in Rule R501, new battery options, including new form factors in Rule R601, and new power switch and servo power options. The related rules about how devices must be connected have received important clarifications, so be sure to read them carefully early in the season. Another new item available this season is the Limelight 3A, a new Vision Co. processor that can be programmed with native support from the First Tech Challenge SDK. Finally, teams should be prepared for some important changes when it comes to match flow this season. Teams will be required to select and initialize an op mode at the beginning of the match, even if it's their teleop program. Teams now have the option of stopping their autonomous program early, without penalty, and without affecting their ability to later run a teleop program. It's also very important that robots do not move during the period between auto and teleop, including movement that may be caused by initializing servos. This kind of movement can result in a major foul and yellow cards for repeated violations. Be sure to review these rules and understand how they affect your code before you arrive at an event. And while you're at it, take a look at the new rules about the operator console, including new size restrictions. A lot has changed this season, so it's a good idea to start fresh with a full reading of the competition manual. We think you'll enjoy the additional clarity and freedom in the robot construction and technology-related rules. Don't forget to arrive at your events with any necessary documentation for the materials that you use. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the deep.